Absolutely. We're going to hear an excerpt from the DVD on culture of experts right now. Most 20-somethings disengage from active participation in the Christian faith during their young adult years. Only one-fifth of 20-somethings have maintained a level of spiritual activity consistent with their high school experiences. 70% of teens who are involved in a church youth group will stop attending church within two years of their high school graduation. 88% of the children raised in evangelical homes leave church at the age of 18, never to return. From the beginning, God has commanded that spiritual leadership and the training of children is to come from fathers. We are to be the experts. In Ephesians 6, 4, we are told, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. It's no wonder that we have a generation of young people who have no direction or purpose, who have developed a worldview that does not include the values which were precious to our grandparents. By abdicating the authority God has entrusted to us, we have created a vacuum of leadership in our homes. In this film, we set out to interview men who are bucking that trend. Each has decided to take Ephesians 6-4 to heart and has chosen to take leadership in his home and family in a radical way. They have chosen a path which may seem strange not only to our society at large, but even to many in the church. They have decided to take direct responsibility for the training of their children by choosing not only to educate their children at home, but also to develop a home business which allows them to be at home as well. They do this in order to have more flexibility to participate in the education, training, and discipline of their children. They have chosen to take extreme measures ordinary men embarking on extraordinary fatherhood. Along with Greg as the host, you heard Jason Buzzard and Shauna Lamaman as the narrators. Uh, Dallas, could you tell us a bit about how you selected the five families to be interviewed on this project and a little bit about their diverse background? Uh, okay. Well, we had a criteria that we were looking for. We were looking, of course, for men who were involved with their families and really wanted to um, disciple their families, especially by bringing their work home and involving their families in that work as much as possible. And then after that, we just kind of looked. There was lots of places we looked. We looked on the internet. We knew some of the families um, through networking. We wanted as big a geographic area as possible. We wanted as diverse a background as possible, so as many people as possible could identify. We didn't want skills and trades that people felt like were unattainable. We wanted things that Anybody could do painting, um, for example. You know, anybody can paint. So you struck off the list nuclear physicists? Yeah, uh, uh, they, uh, they didn't make the grade. Not no. quite a home-based home, home -based <laughs> industry, eh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and you had five families. Uh, could you give their names? Uh, okay, let me think here. <laughs> we had the Jost family, which is uh, our Alberta family in the film. And we had four more families from the States. Uh, the Mungers, who have a painting business and a what do you call home resource business. And we had the Rushtons, um, and he makes playgrounds. He was a police officer um, mm. who, who started making playgrounds, which is an interesting connection in the film there. We had, who else? Who Browns. Else we had Browns, that's right. And they, they what did they do again? They, I, I can't remember what he was doing before he started his coffee kiosk business. Uh, we'll have uh, to watch the yeah. film again to find out. <laughs> you, th you think we should know, right? Um, I think he was painting or something. He, 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 was, he actually has a, a coffee kiosk business, yeah. which is a little tiny 100-square-foot um, coffee kiosks that they put in parking lots that already exist, and they can service those up. And um, right. they've got a little, he's got a chain of them, actually, down in the state that he's in. Wow, a Christian Tim Hortons. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's, and it's, they've got all kinds of flavors. It's, they're really good. You, you let us have some of them. <laughs> there are nowhere else you can find those. And uh, I'm missing one right uh, here. Sam Mungers? Did we say Mungers? Yeah, we say Clemens? Yeah, so... Uh, I, I think, think Sam Clemens. Yeah, Clemens. And he's a surveyor. Yeah. Which is uh, a lot... Uh, you look back in the past, a lot of very important men surveyed. I don't know why. It was just a very important job that led to great things. And he was a very inspirational man. Amen. Thanks, Dallas. Uh, Greg, tell us about your previous educational titles that you have worked on and what their reception has been in the educational community. Well, when Dallas started to have this desire to do filmmaking, 
uh, we decided to form a company which uh, we creatively called Movie Makers. We took a long time to get that name. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and we thought, what, do, what movies do we make? And we kept hearing in any business, you start with what you know. And I, 30 years in education, no education. So we began with educational films targeted at kindergarten to grade three. They're amazing films. Uh, one of them is called Amazing Maps. One's called Amazing Math. And one is called Amazing Detectives. We're, we're really creative on our names, can you tell? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> uh, and, and I notice uh, subitize me. What on earth is subitize me? Well, subitizing, As, actually, and that, that's interesting that you say subitizing. The, the building of subs or, <laughs> or underwater things? We, 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 did the, we made the film and found out that we were pronouncing the word incorrectly. It's subitizing, and we had to go back and have the uh, actors dub over <laughs> <laughs> to say subitize rather than subitize. But subitizing uh, is in the new Alberta curriculum which is being rolled out as a, a concept for teachers and we can see homeschool parents using this film as well. Uh, the idea of subitizing is the concept of being able to instantly recognize a number of objects, how many the quantity is without having to count them. So you roll the dice, you see that X shape, you know that's five without having to count. And the film is a very creative story. Dallas just kept pushing the envelope to make it into a story. I just wanted to make it a math lesson. <laughs> uh, it's a very, very creative story. It won a gold Remy Award at the Houston World Fest in which these children go on this adventure learning how to su subitize at higher and higher levels until they are able to subitize into the hundreds by l recognizing patterns and instantly knowing the number. That's neat. We'll, mm -hmm. If we get a chance later on, we'll talk about some of the other productions. How can listeners get a hold of a copy of Entrusted with Arrows? How much is it? And, and the other uh, presentations as well. Entrusted with Arrows is nineteen ninety nine plus shipping and uh, GST if you're in Canada. Uh, you can get there by going to entrustedwitharrows.com. We also have moviemakers.ca which you can find it there as well, along with the educational films. So that's entrustedwitharrows.com for this uh, movie on homeschool fathers and moviemakers.ca for the other educational presentations. We shall return to talk with Greg and Dallas Lamoman of Movie Makers shortly. We will now hear a first selection of their family uh, ensemble called the Jos, who are also uh, interviewed in the film. And after our sponsors, you will hear an excerpt from the DVD which features Dale and Lisa Jose of Milk River, Alberta, and their experience with home-based schooling and business. From their 2006 project, My Heart's at Home, here are the Josties with a song about fatherhood, Turn Your Hearts. Mm -hmm. 